Welcome back. In this section, we are going to learn about CAPM. CAPM is a set of library tools and also I will call it as a framework from SAP. It stands for Cloud Application Programming Model and sometime also you will find people refer this as CAP, just CAP. Now the first question which comes is why CAPM? In the previous section so far we have worked with creation of application in cloud with the help of Java Spring Boot and Java Spring Boot is from Pivotal and now what we have with us is CAPM. Now CAPM is predominantly built in Node.js. Almost all the modules which you will see are built with Node.js and also you will create or develop application in Node environment. So that is one of the major difference but with the help of CAP model of programming, you will be creating application. It will be on the cloud or maybe in your on-premise system also. And these applications have some specific way of handling problem solving. You have given a use case, how you will map those use case into first functional parts and then how you map those functional parts into technical part. So with the help of CAPM, the way you create application in cloud becomes easier and we will also work hands-on shortly how actually it makes it simpler. So before that I would like to start with telling what exactly is CAPM. CAPM is basically a set of library language and also tools. If you work with VS Code then there are plugins which you have to install to work with CAPM or if you work with WebID, then there are internally built-in plugins which helps you develop CAPM-based application. There are starter projects also, which will be over time embedded as a template as well. So there are library, language, and tools. These three are what comes from the official documentation. I will also add from my side that it is also a framework. So you are given a specific way of doing a particular task for example i want to create a service so where should i create it how the file should be so all that a framework defines so i will also call it a framework and this is given to developers to create application and this application as the name suggests cloud application programming so this application are intended to run on clouds so that is what it is it is basically library, language, tools, and also a framework. And the framework is something what personally I see it, but the library language and tool is something what the official documentation says CAPM is. And you as a developer will be using this library to create application and you deploy those to cloud. And also as a developer, you will see there are a lot of internal part of the code which decreases the amount of work as a developer you do to create an application. There are a lot of new parts here when you focus your attention from a UI developer or from a Java developer or even from a web developer to CAPM. If you have a basic understanding of Node.js, it will be very helpful. But nowadays, Node is becoming a lot prominent part of SAP development. So I assume that you already have at least a basic understanding of Node.js. This will be required when we do the hands-on. And um, also if you are following this course, we have already worked a lot in the microservices where we have covered the Node basic for users who are new to Node.js. Also one point which I missed is in your individual application, it can also happen that you want to use some already developed code which is part of an application and using that code for example what can be that code for example i basically created a structure of student and um, courses and then i want to build another module where those students and those uh, courses structure are required then i can just use my previous app code as dependency and build my new app and only add the code which are new so i can modularize also the previously used application 
to create my new application. So how that is done, all that we will see when we work on the hands-on and we will cover almost all the important parts a developer need to know to work with CAPM in the hands-on. Now, when we just think in terms of a application, we have the UI, we have the service, we have the backend. In CAPM, what you will find predominantly CDS, which is core data services, are used. CDS are a way of creating entities. We have already seen a lot of entities in our CDS course where we created many structures, many views, which are based on CDS. So with the help of CDS, we can define entities, which are basically structures, which are stored in the database, or we can also call it tables. Tables are nothing but structure, which defines our data. Then with the help of CDS, you will also find we can create services with the help of CAPM library. So if you want to define a service to get all the student records or to get students records who are enrolled in a particular course, you can do that. And also with the annotations, you can tell the UI what are the fields or what are the information to display. For example, you can annotate names, emails and say, OK, show that in the first page. And if the user clicks and go to the detail page, then you can show enrollments of the student and all the information. So with the help of CDS, we can basically create UIs. We can use it to create service, which is you will see here in this CAPM model. And also entities are something which we have already seen how to create with CDS in the previous courses also. Now let's look into some of the general rule of thumb which is always followed while working with CAPM. So CAPM basically follows two main principles, I will say. First is the declarative approach. For example, if there is a requirement for me and um, as a technical person, my first thinking will be, okay, what will be the table structure? What will be the service? What should come in the UI? But what CAPM says is you need to focus more on the functional side. So that is the first principle, the declarative approach. And the second is service based approach. So what it basically means is that you need to break down the functionality into service and basically work on the service to get the functionality. So how that is done, we will get more idea once we work on the application. But let's get in sense of what these two principle actually means with one example. For example, let's take this use case which we have been working in the microservice in the last section also so this use case we have student student have um, multiple courses to get enrolled on and they can enroll in one or more courses so this is a lms system which we are trying to build and um, the first thing is if a customer comes and says okay this is my requirement i need to have a lms where i have student i have courses and student can enroll in courses now in this situation the declarative approach tells us to take our time in understanding the problem and also thinking about different outcome which can happen. For example, it can happen that in future, the students can also create courses. If you have a platform where only instructor can teach, but it can also happen that sometimes student can also have their own courses where they are teacher. So you have to think about the evolving process of the application so that in future, if someone is trying to add those functionality, then there are a lot of components which you have already created, which are reusable. It should not happen that they have to create a separate app from scratch. If the future requirement is just to add student can be a teacher or the student can also have their own courses in which they are teaching. So the point here is that you have to think about the future and create the application which can be reusable in the future. So you have to spend some time in thinking about how to model the structures, keeping in mind the future need or future reusability aspect of your application. Now, if I try to create application with the CAPM model here, what I will do here is the students and the courses, I can create those as an entity. The next thing is how the functionality or the service can be implemented. The service 
or the functionality which I have can be create student in my platform or basically add student in my platform, enroll a student to a course or create a course. So that will be as a service. And the third thing will be to see UIs. I require to see all the student information. I require to see all the courses information. Also, I might need all the students enrolled in a particular course. And in this case, we can use annotation and pass it with the service. So the service can be used to render UIs. Now, the annotations are not just there to create UI out of service, but they are in general used to enrich the information we pass about data. So how to work with this data, how to represent those, what this data stand for, how to represent those if you are trying to pull in analytics with the data. So all that information we can pass with annotation. Now, one more essential feature or one more key ingredient you will see in CAPM is querying to a service. So this is something new which you will see that we will perform when we work with CAPM. And also we are going to perform this in hands-on step in level two or level three. What will basically happen is that if we create a service, then it will give us all the information what we have about an entity or entity with an association. But if you want to only capture certain value, for example, it can happen that I get all the information about student and which courses they are enrolled. I can basically query those information, treating or thinking it as a database table and I can query those information and say, okay, give me only students which are enrolled in course A or course B or who have signed up after maybe December 10, 2019. So I can write those queries in the output of my service data. And this is one of the feature which you will see in CAPM where we can basically create multiple other functionality reusing an existing service. Now, one important thing which we have to also consider here, you might see this something similar to object oriented or object relation model like what we used to do in Java, but this is completely different from object oriented or object relation concept. One of the main characteristics here is the service we create, they are stateless. And um, in object oriented programming, you might see that we create an object out of a class and that object has variables. And over time, there are data added to the variables. So the objects are basically stateful. They are not stateless. In this scenario, in CAPM, you will see almost everything will be services and services in CAPM are treated as stateless. So that is the main reason or that will be the main fundamental difference. Or also you can add this fact that you are basically going to implement new services by querying existing services. So that makes it different from object relation model. Once we go in the hands-on and we try to implement those, you will be much more clear what all features the CAPM model packs for us. Now, coming back to the hands-on part, we have divided the learning of CAPM model into multiple levels. So in the level one, we will get a end-to-end -end prospective. We will avoid going in details about a specific topic like creation of service or creation of entities in the database or even creating the UI, we will try to cover this end-to-end -end spectrum of a application development and we deploy this to SAP Cloud Platform. And once we get a full idea about how can we take this CAPM and create application, then we will go and try to explore individual parts. So the level one will be end-to-end -end prospective and the consecutive level will be going one layer deeper into CAPM and trying to explore those. So let's catch up in the next section where we start with the level one, where we start working with the installation of the CAPM from scratch and creating a end-to-end -end application of CAPM and then deploying it to cloud platform and seeing all that hands-on. So let's catch up in the next section to start that.